Hello everyone. Um, I hope you are all very, very well. Um, please forgive me. I'm a little bit nervous because um, I've wanted to do this video for a long time and actually um, I've just been a bit scared to do it. I've seen a few tweets and Instagrams. I've had loads of DMs with people saying to me, speak up, what was your experience about things? Um, and I've just been really frightened to speak my truth. I was speaking to a friend a couple of days ago, several friends actually, just talking to them and asking them their opinions and if I should do it or not. And a lot of people have encouraged me to speak my truth and to speak about my experiences uh, within the industry. So I just wanna make this very clear. This isn't a video to bash anyone. This isn't a negative video. This isn't, you know, that kind of thing at all. This is simply me speaking about what I've been through uh, in the past 11 years um, and finally feeling like, no, I'm nervous about it, but feeling like I'm not ashamed to speak about it. And I, I, uh, I'm at, and that's a strong point for me. So, or should I say a strong place really? So I just wanna start it off and just, and just, you know, try first of all, spread some positivity because there's so much going on in the world right now. So I wanna send my love to everybody um, and, and just remind people that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and things will get better and I'm praying that they do. I was born and raised in Islington um, some of you may not know, but my mum was in Soul to Soul. She was a single black woman that raised four kids, kids with the help of my auntie and my grandfather. Um, and she was a very strong woman. She, she was a singer, um, but she also raised me to, to have thick skin. She raised me to be a strong, independent, young black woman. She raised me to fight off any negativity and to try my best to keep things positive at all times. Um, sadly, my mum passed away just under three years ago, but the lessons that she's taught me, money couldn't buy that. And that is probably why 11 years later, after taking some bashing at times, I can say that I've been strong enough to keep going. Um, I'm very proud, very, very proud to be a black woman, extremely proud. Um, I'm proud of my culture, my heritage. I'm proud of what my family have done, you know, uh, what they've sacrificed for us as, as kids to, to be in this industry. I think for me in particular, I can't speak on behalf of my brothers and sisters, but I can only speak for myself that really <laughs> my mum done so much to give me an opportunity she sacrificed so, so much and I'm forever grateful for that. And she was, you know, she had a tough time in the industry too as a black woman and got, you know, regularly drugged, judged for the fact that she had dreadlocks, for the fact that she was a black woman, uh, for the fact that she spoke her mind, uh, was strong, independent, and she would speak about those experiences to me and would warn me and say, this and this would happen. Um, I think it's only right that I share my experiences in order to ho hopefully help other people speak up to, um, to inspire other people to speak their truth. So the first experience that comes to my mind is when it was when I was 16. I went for the X Factor twice, once when I was 16, once when I was 19. And when I was 16 years old, I made it down to the judges' houses. Um, and, um... This person in particular said to me, you know, you haven't made it through, but give me a call in a couple of months and, you know, I'll sign you. I will take you on as an artist. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. At 16 years old, it's the break that I've been waiting for. I remember calling this particular person and saying to him, look, I'm in a position where I'm ready to start working and I'm, I, you know, I'm eager, I'm good to go. And the reply and the response that I got was, I already have one black artist. I don't need another. I wasn't sure how to take that, to be honest. I still kind of have to, I have to really take that in even now, however many years later, think to myself, wow, that was really something that was said. And, you know, and it really, it sucked. 
it really, really sucked to hear those words because of your skin color. You now can't, you now can't have this opportunity that was, that was promised. And I know that, you know, not all promises can be kept, but that was a big deal for someone who was only 16. Um, the music industry is such a funny little place. Uh, I love singing. I love what I do, but if it wasn't for the love that I have for music, I definitely wouldn't be in this industry. And, and a few reasons are, I got told uh, when I first won the X Factor at 19, I got told, right, cause you're black, you are gonna have to work 10 times harder than a white artist because of the color of your skin. You can't have braids, you can't have an afro, you can't have anything that basically is my identity. You have to have hair, for example, that appeals to white people so people can understand you better. I mean, I was only 19 years old. There's only so much you can understand at 19 when your life has completely changed overnight. Um, and that was quite hard to, to digest. I got told to bleach my skin. Um, and that was something I refused to do because it just is absurd to me that somebody could even remotely say to someone, bleach your skin so that you could look whiter. I, still to this moment, it breaks my heart that I was told that. Um, and sorry if I get emotional, guys. I, I know so many people know me as an emotional person. I'm really trying my hardest to hold back tears because it's really it's heartbreaking, the shit that went on. And... Um, I've experienced microaggression so many times. I get told regularly um, and have been told from previous management companies that I've been with and stuff, I, uh, you have to smile more on your Instagram because you come across aggressive. Um, you know, if you don't smile, you're not relatable. You can't have baby hairs showing on your showing on any hairstyle that you do because you come across as aggressive. A label that I was with told me that and that's why I wanted to leave them. You can't release this kind of music because white people don't understand that. You have to appeal to only a certain radio station so that that's what white people listen to. So, you know, you have to do this kind of music because people understand what you want to say. <laughs> and to have that dictated to you and so, so many times on different levels by different people, I'm so upset with myself that I allowed that. I'm so pissed off with myself. And the, 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 the joke of it is, I could have spoken up much earlier and was too, too scared to. Even doing this video now scares me. It scares me because someone like myself, and many people have lost their parents, right? <laughs> So I'm not trying to play the victim card at all because that's what I get told a lot of times, but I'm really not trying to play that. What I'm trying to say is I, when I lost my mum, was the same day that um, i done the Strictly Reveal day, right? And I'll never forget when my family said to me, Alex, you have to do it, you've got to do it. And I was like, boy, I don't think I can. And I remember watching the sunrise outside the hospital with my auntie. She was like, you got to do this for your mum. This is what your mum wanted. And I was like, okay, cool. I turned up to that red carpet. And one journalist, because I couldn't speak to anyone, right? I literally could not speak. I said, I'll do it, but I can't do press. Because I felt like if I'd opened my mouth, I felt like I just would break down and nobody would understand. Because we hadn't told anyone at that point. Also, it didn't really feel real. And um, so this journalist basically come up to me and said, and said, um, oh, so you're not doing press, being a diva today, are we? <sighs> that person knows who they are. And if I could rewind time, actually, I don't know what I'd do. But to have someone say that, that was the image they had of me because of papers particularly one journalist in particular, this one journalist who people know who I'm talking about, I don't need to mention his name, but he has painted me out to be a complete and utter bitch. 
when I was on Strictly, I remember when uh, I got injured and I was in the hospital and I was so sick and I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want people to be like, oh, she's playing the victim card again. He said, oh, she's back, she's been backstage, she's been throwing chairs, she's been screaming at, um, at Tess, at Claudia, she's been doing this to her partner, that to her partner, and I was in hospital. And I was like, why can't anyone stick up for me? Why can't A Strictly or anyone from the BBC say something? and say the truth. I was told to be quiet. I was told to not say anything. And so I did, and didn't say anything. And that's one of my biggest regrets in life because I was so scared on that show. I was so scared because if I spoke out, she's playing the victim card. If I cried, oh look, she's playing another victim card. If I was happy, it's how can she be so happy? She's just lost her mum, she doesn't care about losing her mum. That's the kind of comments I was getting daily online. So many trolls. I was getting so many trolls telling me all kinds of stuff and um, how I got through it, I look back and I've got no idea, I've got no idea. I don't even like thinking about that experience at all. But thankfully, my family, my friends got me through it and amazing fans that really helped me down and supported me and spoke my truth people in the audience right this is what kills it people in the audience would go they would tweet that particular journalist and go i was there in the audience last night and you said that she was acting xyz that's not what she was doing she was clearly injured and being attended to by a paramedic and so what you what you've written isn't correct and when i read that tweet i was thinking please people please see this tweet because that's the one person that's going to help save the fact that I'm not a bitch and I'm not a diva and I'm not as bad as people may think because of what press have painted me out to be. And that's simply, I believe, it's simply because of me being a black, strong woman. I can speak out for myself because that's how I've been taught. But I would never do it in a way that offends people or hurts anyone. I do it in a way that just speaks my truth when I feel like I need to say something or when I need to express what I think about my music or what I say in interviews. I'm such a positive person that I just want to radiate that to other people because I care. And I feel like if you're surrounded by positivity, that comes back to you tenfold. And um, so to have that experience is, it's just been horrendous. But this is the first time that I've felt like I can actually speak up about all of that because I was I kept myself so quiet and I'm angry at myself for that but now that the, this movement is happening oh, I just feel like now is the right time to speak up and not be afraid to do it and that's just my truth so I wanted to share those experiences with you guys because uh, it's just been you know to be told all the time, oh, you know, because you're a black girl, you won't really make it that far in the industry. You know, because you're black, you should have been, you know, if you, if you were white, you'd be bigger than what you are right now. You'd sell more records, you'd be a Brit Award winner. You'd be this, you'd be that. But because you're black, that hasn't been for me. I've been told that from several, lab several labels, management companies. And it's hurtful. So anyone out there that's scared to speak the truth, speak your truth. Because that's all we've got. We've got one life. You know, I had to watch Misha B's video the other day. Broke my heart because that girl is such a beautiful girl. And, to, you know, to hear about her experience and what she went through inspired me to speak up. It inspired me completely to speak up. I just feel like people need to not see colour. Unfortunately, people really do see colour. But my mum's always raised me to never see colour. You don't see colour. And uh, I will continue that way because that's what makes me happy. People are people. We cut, we bleed the same, we all shit the same way. <laughs> that's what. That's my biggest saying is that no, no one's hiding anybody else. You know, we're all human. We all have feelings. So be kind when you're... If you're one of them people that like to put a bad comment out there to make people feel shit about themselves, don't do it. Just don't do it. Because you know what? It does make it does make us feel shit. And I know that doing this video, probably I may have a couple people that may say something. And hey, it is what it is. But, 
but I just want people to be inspired enough to speak their truth and don't wait years like me to speak it. Just try your best to be honest with yourself. But again, I'm sending you all my love and I just wanted to, to speak out and I've done it now. So yeah, I hope you guys are well and um, I hope to see you all soon.